So we are talking about hell. Let's talk about hell, kids. Now, I was on Twitter just this afternoon, and a good friend of mine, atheist, had a tweet out that said, I get told that I'm going to burn in hell at least five times a week. And he meant it. Now, if you happen to be a Christian and you're listening to this, okay, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that in an argument. Let's just say that's not a good way of, that's not a good way of ensuring an honest and open discussion. You say to your, your, you say to your debate partner, you don't agree with me, you're going to burn in hell forever and ever and ever. Let's just say that's not such a good strategy if you want to have an honest interaction, okay, and leave it at that. It's not a good idea. It's not said in the spirit of ambassadorship, let's say. Remember, we are supposed to be ultimately ambassadors for Christ. But the question still arises. What is hell? And more importantly, who goes there? Well, as far as what hell is, the best concept that I can find in the Bible for the concept of hell, of what in fact it is, is referred to a couple times as a lake of fire. Think about that. You are on a lake that is, consists only of fire, and you are basically being burned alive forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Now that sounds to me bad enough. <laughs> that sounds to me sufficiently hellish that I don't have to move past that to find any other concepts because that would suck. And that sounds really pretty bad. The more important, the more important question is actually who goes there? Who winds up damned for all time, burning on a lake of fire. Now, believe it or not, you may not know this. Some atheists know the Bible really, really well, be mostly because they're usually former Christians. They know it usually better than I do. And some atheists don't know it at all. So you may or may not know this. This may be new information to you. But believe it or not, there is more than one way to interpret this in the Bible. There are at least three different interpretations based solely on the scripture alone, and there could be as many as five or six. But let's focus on three. The first answer to the question, who winds up damned for all time, burning in hell, is actually nobody. Wait, what? Yeah, nobody. There is a theological concept out there backed up by the scriptures, backed up by the word of God, at least five scriptures, that when Jesus went to the cross and he paid the penalty for our sins on the cross, he looks up and goes, it is finished. And his sacrifice on the cross was good for everybody. Nobody goes to hell. He paid the price for us all. Even Adolf Hitler. Everybody whether you accept him, whether you believe in him or not. And believe it or not, this is actually, this can be defended based on the Word of God. That is how we arrive at what our theology is. We read the Bible, and we, you know, discuss the scriptures therein, and that is how we arrive at theology. And this, this is scripturally, it can be backed up by, by at least five scriptures. The most important one, as far as I'm concerned, is from Romans, I forget exactly where, but it goes, God has given all men over to disobedience so that he might have mercy on them all. Now that sounds to me pretty crystal clear. Mercy on them all. That doesn't sound any room for compromise in that. And yeah, that may sound a little too, too good to be true. But believe it or not, I'd be really cool with that. Yeah, it lets some people like Hitler off the hook. But it also lets some, there are probably some really cool kind of bad people who there wouldn't wind up in hell. Like, let's say Jim Morrison. I'm sure Jim Morrison is pretty cool. Is Jim Morrison burning in hell right now? I hope not. But maybe. 
So I would actually be cool with that, even though it lets some of the bad guys go free. I say in the spirit of brotherhood, let them go free. But it's not actually, believe it or not, a very popular creed, though it is defendable by the word of God. It's not very popular. Perhaps that's why it's not very popular. Because it lets the bad guys go. So let's look at another, another interpretation. This one has a lot more adherence. Who winds up in hell? Almost everybody. And that, has a, that is a lot more popular. Most Christians believe some version of that one. Who winds up in hell? Almost everybody. And it is also scripturally justifiable. The one that most people usually turn to, wide is the gate and long is the road that, or broad is the road that leadeth to destruction and many there be who find it. The way is narrow that leads to life and few there be who find it. Now, I personally don't believe that that scripture is talking about eternal damnation per se. I believe that is more a reference to this pleasant earth and how people are living in the present tense, how they are living lives of quiet desperation, how they are living lives wherein they are sowing the seeds of their own destruction as we speak, ruining their marriages, ruining their families, you know, destroying their careers. That's how I view that scripture. I don't necessarily see that as, you know, the road is broad that leads to destruction, so most people are going to burn in hell. But that's how most people commonly interpret, interpret that scripture. The last way is the one that I truly believe. Yes, there is a hell, but it is reserved only for the truly wicked, the truly evil people, your Hitlers and your Himmlers. And most of us don't wind up there, including the non-believers. Now, this can also be backed up by the scriptures. There is talk in the book of Revelation, for example, as there is a rebellion led by about a third of the population. Now, a third of the population sounds pretty like a pretty big group of people. But I think that would easily include the truly bad. And B, that could easily be a number that would be the truly evil people. If I had to guess at, you know, who's really bad in this world, I would say there's about 40% good, 60% bad, 30% being truly terrible people, and the rest just kind of lean evil.